Here we go, Chapter 4, Arborist Exam Prep, Trees and Water. Water management is crucial for tree health, especially in urban environments where trees may not have natural accesses to water sources. So trees absorb water and minerals dissolved in water through the roots. And did you know that a tree can absorb hundreds of liters of water in a single day? But here's something else surprising. Up to 95% of that water is returned to the atmosphere through transpiration. So irrigation is often necessary, especially in urban planting sites, and for newly planted trees especially. When setting up an irrigation program, we need to consider several factors. The species of the tree. Uh, different trees have different water needs. Weather conditions like drought or excessive rain. Uh, soil conditions and how water is applied and even water quality and conservation measures need to be addressed. Let's talk about drought. It's a prolonged period of water deficit. Drought can cause root loss, marginal leaf scorch, leaf drop and twig dieback. In extreme cases, it can even lead to plant death. So we'll just review a few of the key terms we learned in the last chapter, Soil Science, and uh, here's some vocabulary that you're really going to need to remember. Water drains through the soil as gravitational water. After that, what's left is either available water, which plants can take up, or hygroscopic water, which is held too tightly by the soil for plants to use. When soil is at its maximum water holding capacity after draining, we call it field capacity. Okay, so then we'll go to the other extreme, which is flooded soil. Flooded soil results in root death due to lack of oxygen, leaf yellowing, defoliation, and crown die back. So some of the same symptoms as, as drought, right? Yeah, so trees are pretty cool how they, uh, they can adapt to both drought and flooding. For example, during drought, trees may develop uh, extensive root systems, and some species may even shed their leaves or even go dormant. So in flooding, trees may have specialized tissues to transport oxygen internally, or they grow shallow roots near the soil surface to access oxygen. And so there's other, other things that cause drought-like symptoms when they affect the vascular tissue and actually keep the tree from taking up water. So it actually is a drought symptom or a, a water deficiency <laughs> symptom. Uh, trees can also show drought-like symptoms due to girdling roots, trunk injuries, or cankers, vascular diseases, or even lightning damage. All these things that destroy the vascular system are going to keep water and nutrients from flowing through the tree. All right, so we established that the trees lose 95% of the water that they take in through transpiration, but they also, they also lose, um, they lose water through evaporation. And the combined loss is called evapotranspiration, or ET. And the soil moisture reservoir, put very simply, is just the uh, volume of soil that the tree occupies. Newly planted trees have a much smaller root system, usually limited to the root ball, so they need more frequent irrigation as the roots grow into the surrounding soil. The frequency of irrigation should be reduced, assuming there's adequate rainfall. And there's a couple different types of irrigation methods. We've got spray irrigation. It covers a large area, but can lead to runoff and erosion. Bubblers deliver water in streams or umbrella patterns, a little better than drip irrigation. It actually targets localized areas, reducing evaporation and runoff. But you don't want to overdo the irrigation. Over-irrigation is real common in urban settings and can lead to issues like root rot or collar rot. Monitoring the amount of water applied is critical to avoid these diseases. And strategies to conserve water include using only the minimum amount of irrigation needed, xeriscaping, which means using drought-tolerant plants, and grouping plants with similar water needs into hydrozones. And an, and an important factor to keep in mind is actually the water source that the irrigation water comes from. Different water sources can be used for different irrigation, such as groundwater, surface water, recycled water, or des desalinated water, uh, seawater. But caution, recycled water may be high in salts, which can raise soil pH or cause plant toxicity. And recycled water is used, is used for irrigation 
and it helps to conserve our drinking water. So we're not using potable water, we're using irrigate, we're using recycled water. It may provide elements such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, which can benefit trees. But keep in mind, it's also high in salts and other chemicals and can raise the soil pH. It can cause plant phytotoxicity and it can clog irrigation nozzles. So again, you want to test your water uh, for salts and other detrimental chemicals. Specifically, test for soil salinity should be tested regularly, especially if using water from detention ponds, which can have high levels of sodium and chloride salts. If salinity is increasing, it may be necessary to leach the salts out using a large volume of water. Additional methods for water conservation include applying mulch around the trees to retain moisture, using soil amend amendments like organic matter, and then, of course, selecting the right place uh, plants that are adapted to the local conditions. Circling back to flooding, flooding can deprive roots of oxygen and cause root cell fermentation, which produces toxic compounds. It can also lead to root diseases and secondary pest issues like pores and cankers. And that's, law, that's the short term. Even if a tree survives the flooding, it may face long-term problems like being more susceptible to toppling or developing collar rot. Improving drainage is the key to preventing these issues. So if poor drainage is a concern at a site, there could be ways to improve it, such as um, adjusting the grade before planting would obviously be the best thing you could do. Planting trees on mounds, you can actually get them up a little bit so that they're uh, not sitting in water if you do have a flooded condition. And you can install drain tiles, which remove gravitational water from the soil. And tiles are made of clay, concrete, or plastic. Most of the time in the landscape, they're going to be made of plastic. And depth and spacing depend on soil and planting conditions. Well, all right, we got through it. Trees and Water, Chapter 4. Now we're on in the next one, Chapter 5. Please subscribe and hit the like button. I'll see you next time. Thank you.